Hello everyone, and uh, you're watching the Dovecote episode 19, um, it is 7.01pm EST, um, and my guest today is uh, Riley Hopkins from the Moonshot <laughs> Podcast Network, uh, Interstitial 2E, and a variety of other uh, wonderful things. Please uh, tell folks about yourself, Riley. Hi, hello, yes, my name is Riley Hopkins, uh, I am... You may know me as Rev Rybred on your social media platform of choice or as Shadow the Hedgehog from <laughs> 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 Interstitial Infinity. <laughs> this is the most you'll ever see Shadow smiling in a production. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I make games. I uh, specifically Interstitial First Edition and now Interstitial Second Edition come into a Kickstarter near you. You know, the the one bit.ly slash interstitial two E capital I capital two capital E. Oh you got a bit dot hang on, let me let me uh slash interstitial two E. Oh, wait, I, I, I've I had to get so good at spelling the word interstitial over the past like <laughs> six years of my life. Apparently I need to work on that because I never, <laughs> just send it in the uh, in the Twitch chat. Uh, I can't do no. I would be doing what's the? It's chaos control and chaos. What's the other? Chaos one? So there's chaos control. There's chaos. We had, <laughs> there's an episode that came out last week where Jay, where Jay and I fought in character, and I was like looking up respect threads for Shadow. <laughs> so okay. like, I like there's chaos control. There's chaos spear. There's a chaos snap, which is short range chaos control teleport. There is like so many little <laughs> Shadow the Hedgehog powers. There's also gun, chaos burst. He has limiters on his shoulders and his like wrists and knees. Is it chaos blast and chaos control in the original Shadow the Hedgehog game? I, I think it is. I think so. That sounds right. I think it's, blast I... was the evil energy one and control was the good one. Rush. I think it's chaos rush was chaos the good rush. one. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it was like a it's it's like uh they, they don't want to use chaos control because that's just the teleport but for the good right. one it's like you get like ha ah, and you go like phew and yes. rush through everything okay. or whatever <laughs> now i'm just looking up uh now i'm just staring at pictures of shadow that yeah. i need them to re i need them to release a shadow nendroid like yesterday oh my that would be so good um yeah i'm i'm i've said before like uh the the I think like having Black Doom as just like a normal character who existed in the in the Sonic <laughs> universe affected the way that I like think about fiction and writing fiction in a really big way. Or <laughs> it's just like, oh no, of course there's a space demon among all these funny characters. Yeah, of course. <laughs> the devil is real and he's in space. <laughs> yeah, the devil's real and he lives in space. And uh he he can float his little eyeball with tentacles and he's gonna fire beams. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and he wants God. the creatures to kill. He wants the creatures to kill so bad. And you know what? The creatures kind of want to kill. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Black Doom is interesting, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, thank, thank you for being on. I uh, I definitely, um, I mean, fuck. I mean, like, the original Interstitial was probably one of the first indie RPGs that I played. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, with with my friends uh, Marcy and Melody and uh, Mars, uh, I played as uh, what was it, a Lightron who was an Enderman. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just an Enderman, um, <laughs> which was really fun. We had like a, a mid arc uh, character change to like a fucked up and evil version of uh, Minecraft Steve, uh, who <laughs> rode on a rode on a big wolf. Um, this is uh yeah let's it's go um, i i love i i genuinely love hearing that because like interstitial was the first game i ever designed in that way and it was i was like oh i'm not really a designer and then i was making i was like listening to one shot podcasts and i like met people who are like oh yeah i designed and, like i was like oh i like mod games they're like well, that's designing and i was like what <laughs> <laughs> just smashed together interstitial <laughs> for like three months so i was like can i can i kickstart this now yeah. i also i remember like when interstitial came out like the first interstitial there, there was such a um that there was like kind of like discord was just kind of like 
you know, mm -hmm. starting up. And there was such a like L for G kind of L the LFG community yes. around it. It was, it felt nuts to me. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it, like, it truly made me feel crazy because I was like, wow, like it's, how is it getting everywhere? And like the answer to that is like, I, Kingdom Hearts 3 was releasing, hmm. got it memorized, was getting big. And Joe and Wheels were like, yo, do you want to do a thing for the show? And I was like, yeah, of course, absolutely. <laughs> and then somehow like the perfect storm hit. And then like three big tweeters were like, oh, I like this. And boom. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. Um, Very exciting. It's just one of my favorite things we've ever done. We were so scared that nobody would follow over from the uh, interstitial feed to the uh, Riley Hopkins and their amazing friends feed. <laughs> yeah. How, I mean, how, how was that in terms of folks hopping over? Genuinely, I was watching those numbers all week the first week and like I had gone back and like wheels has got me like the data for the original week and like it has it it, it, it can't it, it we we I think met the season two numbers which are lower than the season one numbers but and like I'm I'm so happy with that like to a new feed. Are you kidding me? That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I am elated by the response that it has gotten and like the the follow through from people the amount we the fact we've been able to get people to come has been a good blessing <laughs> so, yeah. that's why we did surprise drop it because we were like we need to signpost it so hard so nobody misses it because i could see so in my mind's eye somebody going like oh they made another season and then i'm just like no <laughs> please know that we did yeah um, mm -hmm. so, uh, folks have 11 days to get interstitial Tui. Um, uh, do you want to talk a bit about like what's different with Tui? Yeah, absolutely. So interstitial, for those of you that might not know what interstitial is, it is a, it is a crossover and fan fiction inspired role-playing game, right? It is based out of the power is using powered by the apocalypse, but is centered around the idea of links, which are connections between you and other people and how your stats go and you know, how, how, how relationships change over the course of an adventure. But through the context of fan fiction and crossover and multi-fandom RP, that means that it's like, oh, Shadow the Hedgehog has a link with Shigeo Kageyama from Mob Psycho. Now, 1E had a lot of really good ideas, but after a couple of years, I think we really looked at it and said, what if this game didn't screech to a halt every time somebody wanted to make a link? <laughs> or like, like looking at it and going like, what if I made this game with intention and, you know, with, more game design experience behind it and so 2e has done a couple things like the biggest change is to link moves they used to be like a special extra move that you had or something to that effect but now it's just a passive way that you generate links so instead of having to roll for links like the chosen is like oh if somebody looks at you and recognizes you for your destiny boom make a light link like it's one of those things to help you get into those characters more and there's less filler moves. I, I was talking the other. I, I was. Try, I'm trying to write up a Kickstarter post about this to like oh, to showcase that change. But like the the first book had a lot of playbooks that had a lot of like oh plus one plus two yada 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 or like oh you can roll this with this and like yeah. moves that fill out a playbook. And I've tried and I had a lot of playbooks that didn't have a heart to them didn't have like a whole idea that followed through it and i've tried to fix that so every playbook has a gut to it and every playbook has a thing that it works towards and every playbook has like i've raised the power level of everything there's no more xp any move that would have gotten you xp just automatically levels you up in the middle of the session because <laughs> i i i want us to play hard and fast like the power levels up on everything there's a couple new playbooks and all the basic moves have been rewritten and links are your stats now. No longer is it like plus two, it's plus whatever you have in links, minus one. So it everything should be, you roll bigger, you play bigger, and it hopefully gives you the space to role play better and role play and have a better time with it. Instead of like, again, the entire game going, does anybody want to stop and make a link with this donut? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's great. And it's a, yeah, and and I've written a GM guide. I did yes. it. Everyone, <laughs> I've heard your I've heard your responses. <laughs> I've heard you request. Please write a GM guide, and it's very hard for me because I'm just like, oh, you play pretend. 
next page. <laughs> but I think there's eight pages in there, and I've also asked Marn, who is GMing Interstitial Infinity, to write a chunk of things. So there's multiple perspectives in there because my problem is I do think that other people keep doing like doing GMing better than me. I'm like, well, why do you want to hear from me? Like, I clearly don't know shit. <laughs> yeah, that's but really so, relatable. So, <laughs> yeah, so it's that there's a bunch of changes outside of that, and like, yeah, the the like. The whole game, I think, runs smoother and is less of a batch of good ideas that you can kind of rub the dirt off of and is more of just, what if this game was good out the jump? Hell yeah. I'm really excited to see that. I, um, I'm I'm glad to hear that, like, <clears throat> you're kind of pulling away from, uh, like, plus, it, like, 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 you know, moves mm -hmm. that are plus one or uh, stat swap focused, because, like, I love... I love to see some under hollow hills ass shit. I love to see some like long weird moves that do a bunch of shit. Like that's that's what I'm that's what I, I'm looking for in 2024. Thank you. Yes, you you understand me on a, on a deep level. This is exactly what I want. I have a I've actually I've made up some character like proper spreadsheet character sheets because somebody showed me really good ones that somebody made for interstitial first edition, and so I was like, okay, well I I want to I want to build like that. And I've, I've listed every playbook move in there. And I want to go down to like one of my favorites. Um, but there's one for the the other, which is just, so where is it? It is called, uh, let's see how you like it. And spend links freely. Spend links freely to shatter someone else's personhood into pieces. Each link spent creates a new being with wants of their own, cursed to live, to live a life like yours. The others flee for now, but will return to us to the story in the future. That's so good. Just just crack them open. <laughs> you, you, you could just do that. And like it's a bunch of shit like that. And then I also have a. Uh, I've already made a playbook that's not making it into the base game, but I'm going to put in later. <laughs> like I'm going, I'm like because I've been obsessed with Final Fantasy VII. I made a a playbook called The Doomed, which is like a Aerith Gainsborough, Rosenbans, Rosencrantz, and Guildenstern. Like, what if a character is doomed? What if you're not making it? Like you're just not doing it. <laughs> and I I wrote up some playbooks for that that also match like the new kind of power level, where it's like I. Uh, you when you start the game you pick a number of blank like it could be sessions roles something like that it has to be feasibly reachable and then as you like go through sessions or go through roles or whatever you've decided you just reduce that number and when that number hits zero you die you are going to die in a flashy way you are going to like your story ends it cannot be dodged Love that. but like the moves are such like uh you know uh Everyone in the party can spend a link to add 1d6 to your timer. You can reduce your timer by 1d6 to uh, get a uh, to instantly succeed on any roll, or um, make a bonded link with your killer. You know who they are. Like anyone at the table can bring them into a scene. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm so excited. I I am like this is the power level in like story level that I want to be working on because like there was that poll going around Tumblr that was like, what are the best power by the apocalypse moves or like, like a TGRPG moves. I just sat there and read them all. And I was like, cool. Mm -hmm. I need to make better moves right now. <laughs> yeah. I think like, uh, I love it. It sounds like you're, you're doing this, which I, I love a playbook that is like built around a single mechanic or like a mm -hmm. type of token or like, you know, I, I love, I love that sort of thing, uh, and I, I am excited to like see how Interstitial 2 does that. That's also like one of the stretch goals that we're getting close to, and I want to hit so bad, is called Everything is Interstitial, mm -hmm. which is I have reached out to to a bunch of designers, to, to five designers, um, <laughs> Takuma Okada, Karo Assertion, Possible World Games, Brandon Leung Gambetta, <laughs> and Briar Sovereign, Incredible and they're making list. playbooks for the game that are their games. So yeah. Briar is making an armor a stir playbook for interstitial God. where you'll flip the page and it will become armor a stir. And it's a game and that book is then about what that game is about. <laughs> Briar has been saying like, Hey, like, Hey, can I like make the entire faction turn a move? And I'm like, yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Oh, that rules. It, 
And so it's just like the the power levels are so much higher, which uh -huh. makes me so much more excited to play it because like you're going to get to flash your shit and not be like, OK, I can reduce harm by one. I'm like, I don't know. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. As, as a big armorist head, that's very exciting for me. I'm excited to, so excited cool. to read that. That's awesome. God. I'm so fucking excited about armor it. Stir move. Armorist faction turn move is, is really good. Um, speaking of other games, uh, even working on Interstitial TV, uh, mm -hmm. are there any uh, games that... Are there, I'll, I'll start with this first. Are there, are there any other games that you're working on? Oh yeah, I have my 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 work in progress folder is let's just control T Google Docs TTRPG. I have a game that's called the Materia Powered by the Apocalypse game, where what if you instead of a playbook, you open up a playbook and it had slots available and you would slot in moves and the moves would then affect each other like Materia in Final uh, Fantasy. That's so fun. I have I have like an entire mech building card game, like a competitive card game that would be like a mini game in like a a bigger story. You know what I mean? Where like you'd sit down at a table and it's like, okay, I'm changing out the core and the guns and I'm putting this one forward into this lane now. And that rules. I have um, a game called The Winner Takes It All, which is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles themed game oh. where it's like set around the TV, set, set around like a TV episode structure. And then I'm just going to open this up. <laughs> awesome. It It is like the idea of it is that you have four basic moves and any of them can also be fight. Uh -huh. You can process, you can impose, you can relate, you can confront. And like all those things are great. But also if you want to and you need to, those are all a fighting move. And how do those change when you fight? And like you gain pizzazz and you gain like like you gain like a potential points and these can all be changed out for different currencies moving between books and stuff. And like that I'm really excited about. I've like started laying that out, but I need to play test it. Um I won't take you through all of these, I promise. Dead man's gambits and the world ends with you playbook based on a uh, heart, the city beneath. Yeah, good, 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 good. I, I have a Sonic the Hedgehog tactics game based off of Euroclix. Yes. Oh my god, yes. Please. <laughs> and then yes. a a game two two the other only other two other games are a game called Dudes in Offices Yelling at Each Other, which is a game based on the Born <laughs> series. And then <laughs> <laughs> uh, what what is the what is the other one this it's a stephen king one this city is alive and it hates you is uh -huh. is is just a stephen king game about like what if a what if a fucked up city you lived in yeah love love a love a folder of work in progresses uh i i did um uh what's uh fucking uh uh gila games does um has like it sh showed on Twitter at one point like that they're like list of work in progresses and they, they have like a, a whole thing for it and I started doing that recently and I was like my work in progresses were like falling off the page <laughs> like, <laughs> this this will happen this is known to happen to game designers mm -hmm. um, listen because like I don't know I can't draw I can't like I'm not a good writer like story wise so when I get obsessed with something I'm like and I can't, I can't like put it down on paper. I'm like, I will need to make a game about this or something, right. <laughs> like, because I can't like make fan art. So I'll just make a fan game of thing. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's real. Um. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh speaking of, uh, I don't know. I, I'm. <laughs> I, I got you. I'm fa I'm failing to do this segue. But uh, what are? <laughs> uh, uh, I'd love to hear about some games uh that, that you've been like playing recently or interested in recently uh reading recently do you want to limit me to tabletop games or do you want me to move into because <laughs> i am i am a video gamer by trade so uh, you you tell me what you want here <laughs> let, let's do a teacher you focus but i am i am mm -hmm. uh curious to hear about the rest the so recently i've been playing uh fellowship second edition yes and... oh my god I be, I'm I'm trying to learn it, and I guess I'm looking for more advice here because, okay. like, it I'm I'm run I'm running it for a future season of of Riley Hopkins and their amazing friends, uh -huh. and I I don't want to say more on that than that, uh -huh. but like I'm trying to figure out the right balance on how it works because like there a lot of times I want to do a move and I can't I I I sit there and I go okay what move works for this 
I'm not sure any of these do. Do I just say pay a price and you can do it? And I'm like trying to figure out the right amount of price to pay. I think we landed on the right vibe last time. Uh, and, and now it, now we're killing it. But like fellowship is a game that I'm really enjoying. And I like, I like the structure of it. I like the like GM listness of it, how we're all working together into tell these stories. But I, I am just like, but am I rolling the dice right? Am I doing the pay the price right? Yeah. <laughs> tell me. I think a lot of it winds up being about uh, like, you are kind of trying to grind them down, right? Like mm -hmm. that's the overlord or the you know the framework, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever one you're doing. Winds up being about grinding them down. Um, I've found that a lot of the time, like, uh, the best move to use is just uh, what is it? Well, it's usually like either one of overcome, keep them busy, get away, or talk sense. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm the... grabbing my cheat sheets I have on the floor next yeah. to me. <laughs> um, I I I tend to. I, I will also say I've not run that much of this game. I, I probably mm -hmm. need to run more. I've I've studied this game a lot. <laughs> it's like it's something <laughs> that I'll say. Like I've read this game a lot. I've played it a lot, um, but I've not run it, run it that much. Um, but uh, it, it's I like it, and it's mm -hmm. I'm I'm liking the the I like the moves. I like how it's written. I just I want to I want it, I want to feel like I'm doing right by it. You know what I mean? And that's like kind of where I land with games a lot of times is because like. I'm a rule breaker by trade. <laughs> and so when I play a game, I'm like, I want to make sure I'm respecting you in the same way that I I would, res but I don't respect my own games. You know, I treat others better than I want to be treated. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it, it does kind of beg you to, to cut to cut a bit of a balance. Um, mm -hmm. That can be tricky. Are you using um, the basic or the advanced version of pay the price this is getting very into like fellowship oh TV i don't know the advanced version tell me the okay. advanced version so, of pay a price uh this is coming the so if you have uh do you have all the books yes 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 okay. uh one of my players has given me access to all the books awesome so if you look in the playbook section for the fourth book you'll see that some of them some of the they basically like uh, uh velmini have rewrote some of the rules or some of the moves uh -huh. and then also like changed a couple of them or added advanced versions of a couple oh and, shit um, Pay the price advanced is instead of uh, instead of like just being like oh, okay it's gonna be this cost. There's like a checklist that you go off, and then uh, you unmark all of the prices <laughs> when either someone fills their belly or when the last option has been marked. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, players. I'm sorry. <laughs> copy and paste into our little discord e chat it's, it's a pretty good one you've you've located the fellowship to e knower i thank you so much for all your assistance in this track of course. <laughs> um, yeah it's a, it's a really great i i do actually like even i think with with that tool it is like you know uh it's a game that does kind of ask you to like listen to its advice and try and interpret it mm -hmm. um and that can be kind of tricky. And I, I, I guess that's the thing, right? It's like it has a, it has like it does want you to play it a certain way. Mm -hmm. And my, my way of playing games is to just bounce off the walls at like a high speed. <laughs> and like if I see a wall, I want to run into it. I want to try to break it. But okay. I, I, I want. I'm liking it a lot. Um, the other game that I'm like really reading in like that I in looking for a, a game to play in this uh, series or whatever. Like, it, I, I looked at uh, Errant, uh, still which is there. on... Errant is like, that is a... That's a... That's a tables game. <laughs> that's, that's a... I, I love... Let me make sure this is the game I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love a game that's like... This is like events and like making your way through shit like it's it it's it's chunky in the way i like a game to be chunky it has so much going for it and and i was really i really want to play it i just need to like learn it and then find a group and then find time and then <laughs> look at that this is a realm ass game this, this game uh -huh. is in a realm <laughs> this motherfucker right here will put you in a realm yeah like nobody's business this looks awesome <laughs> it's it's great it is it is extremely up the right alley it, it is what i'm hoping for yeah um 
This is an unrelated question. Do you have a Logitech mouse with an unlockable scroll wheel? Yeah, I, I, I do. I keep it locked, so it clicked. It goes chunk, 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 okay. chunk. Yeah, because my mouse used to make that exact same noise, and I was like, that's the mouse that I used to have. <laughs> I, I have that, and then I have the loudest keyboard known to man, where I just go like... Because I have ceramic keycaps and clicky keys. So now, That's like, awesome. my space bar rings like a typewriter. It goes. <laughs> I like to make as much noise during recordings as possible. It makes editing super easy. I love sound. Uh, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is not a production that really cares about uh, noises and clicks and such. You're, you're good. Um, so... Uh, yeah, uh, last thing, uh, before I think we'll hit news, is, uh, are there any TTRPGs that are coming out, or, like, funding or anything that you're excited about? Oh, so I am, I was looking at, um, like, Briar Sovereign's Case and Soul. I backed that, and I'm really excited about that. Uh, I, I have been looking at Break from a distance, mm -hmm. where I have been, like, pondering Break, because like that game looks really pretty to me and I want to I want it I want to play it but I didn't get it because I feared that it was going to be one of those games I bought and I would never actually take off the shelf but I was like right. oh it's pretty and this is up my alley like why would I not get this but it's like gorgeous it's so gorgeous it's such a beautiful it's book very nice that I'm like book. what what am I doing not getting it um I forgot to mention this I also got a game called Salvage Union um, oh. which might be my answer for I want to run a mech a season of Riley Hopkins and their amazing friends. It, because, like, I've been wanting... I mean, I've tried to run Lancer three or four times, and it has killed me every time. <laughs> Lancer has defeated me. It has broken my my spirit and my bones. <laughs> it just does not play well. I can't get it to work. So there's always an issue with the with Reaper or Audacity or something. But Salvage Union looks gorgeous. And I want to run a Zoid season of, of Rataf so bad. And I'm like, that's kind of it. Is like, uh, you're, you're in your fucking Liger and you tackle a, a Command Wolf and rip the cannon off of it. That's your cannon now. That yes. rules. Good. Uh, my, my girlfriend, Wendy, has been uh, running uh, a like very large, I think it's kind of like a West Marches <clears throat> type uh, Salvage Union oh, game. And, uh, oh, that's so cool. Yeah, she she did a thing where it was like, it was like an off week, so so her entire group did like a play by post mm -hmm. attack on their like mwah, rig. Mwah. Uh, that rules. It was fucking awesome. I, I <sighs> hearing all the stories of what happened in it. They they lost like a couple hundred people uh, on their <laughs> on their their station, but they they did win. Mm -hmm. which, good for them. <laughs> Man, it's just. I love a big robot game, and that book itself is so stylish. It it understands its aesthetic so cleanly mm -hmm. that it's it's like a it, it it makes me want to do something like that. Uh, it makes me want to work in its space in a way that like I'm always somebody who will rip off whatever I want to play and like smash it onto whatever game I'm playing and never play with like an in world setting. But I could see a Salvage Union setting working because it's just so evocative immediately. Yeah. That's that's kind of my thing often where it's like uh, that there have certainly been games where I've read the settings and I've been like okay I'm just gonna do my own shit with this but like you know uh, when I whenever when I read like Blades in the Dark it's immediately just like oh mm -hmm. yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna be using this, uh, this <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna play the cool spooky Dishonored setting I think does not have a sun uh, I will be <laughs> they just got little flits of of, of light in the sky. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, and then yeah otherwise I've just been playing. A, a loop of Bolatro to Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and going back and forth forever. <laughs> good. I've heard a lot of re really good things about Bolatro. Uh, still haven't gotten around to it. It's extremely good. It is a game that is poison and it will <laughs> control your brain because it, it has the perfect loop. It has the perfect mechanics where you don't need to think too hard about it. But if you want to, you can. And then it does number go up. It just goes click, 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 click. And it's it's great. It's fantastic. Every time I've wanted to talk about Final Fantasy VII, I've had to walk into a group of play of people playing and talking about Bellatro <laughs> and go, you guys know Barrett? And then dead silence. <laughs> and they're like, I found a new Joker the other day. And I'm like, man. 
Yeah, that's... Please. <laughs> See, I... I don't play... I, like, I'm gonna play Dragon's Dogma 2 when it comes out, because, like, Dragon's mm -hmm. Dogma 1's my favorite game, but I don't play a lot of, uh, like, games that have come out recently. I'm, I'm fucking working my way through Wrath of the Righteous. Like, I'm... Yeah. I'm, I'm slow out here, so... This is this is this is always relatable. Where it's just like, uh, does anyone have any opinions on Nick Valentine? I've been playing Fallout Four, and just like, fuck, leave. What are you talking about? Does anyone have any opinions on Nick Valentine? What am I ten? Am I back in high school? Get out of here! <laughs> yeah. I've been playing this great game called Heavenly Sword. <laughs> the PS3. <laughs> <laughs> Any of you guys played uh what's the fucking name like malicious on the Vita? Uh <laughs> the that. Vita <laughs> Yeah. The Vita was a great system that I bought to only buy games I didn't actually like, but listen to a podcast that said that sounded so excited about them I would forget it every time. <laughs> Got it. Marcy Masswife says Nick Valentine has been dead for ten slutty slutty years. I hope not. I hope he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he's gotten better. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, how's about we do like one or two of the news stories and then take a break? I'm down for that. Let me let me crack let me crack that bad boy open. Yeah. Let's. Uh... Oh God. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot what the stories were for a second, and then, uh -huh. then I looked at them. <laughs> And I felt, it's been a weird week. <laughs> I felt a mix of things. Yeah, it's been a quiet week, but also like the things that did happen have been <laughs> bizarre. Um, they happened so fast and so large. Yeah. Um. So I guess the first thing that we're going to talk about is uh. Y'all know NASA. <laughs> <laughs> hey, have y'all heard about space? Y'all heard about space? Um. So NASA made a NASA made a game. NASA made a NASA made a system neutral tabletop role-playing game adventure um now i think what i should really do here is just go into the document control d6 and we'll understand well actually hang on level first of all uh this is a an adventure designed for a party of four to seven levels uh seven to ten characters okay so what do we have for d6s okay. um well we have 1d6 fire damage and okay. then we have 1d6 okay. fire damage then we also have like mm. I think it's like five or first of all like that's not a lot of damage for you know level seven to ten, but also <laughs> uh, there are multiple young green dragons who attack. Now hold on, those aren't or on I the moon. I I know the moon. Yeah, so my understanding of this is that it is a it's an isekai. First of all, which oh. like okay, so you're level seven to ten. You're being isekai into a different universe that has uh like it's a fantasy world where they have like a human understanding of space there's like a black hole um <laughs> it's also a sunless world to my understanding or at least it was i oh I just like blades in the dark <laughs> yeah just like blades in the dark um this just seems like a lot like i hope whoever made this is getting paid well there's like role playing I... tips for the head researcher it's fascinating so like are you getting into combat in the NASA RPG? Yes. <laughs> right. I mean, Control F attack. We got we got two of them. The dragon will immediately attack the party. You gotta run <laughs> young green. I guess a young green dragon is like level seven to ten in like five E. I I used to play five E, so I know these. This things. is like this has been me watching Dimension Twenty. Is like <laughs> knowing how much D and D I still have internalized. Where yeah. like somebody will make an attack and. And they'll be like, does that hit? And I'm like, no, the last one was this. And then if I if you add the shield, you know, they just put up, then no, that wouldn't hit. That wouldn't hit. <laughs> they have a disease. There's an appendix of scientific concepts. Um, someone should play this with interstitial. I'm not kidding, says Molly. So true. Okay, okay. So we need a party. We need a group of four scientists okay. who are, who, who are, can you give me the pitch on get, what is what is the you're getting isekai in right? So what okay. is like? Yes, I, what, I have to what admit is the, I skimmed, so I'm like a little. I know. I'm I'm, I'm I'm scrolling to the front page here, um, and I'm trying to I'm trying to see like what is the like so, the general idea here? Because I I want I want now to think what are the four scientists that you put in? Okay, so actually you make seven to you make 
four to seven level to seven to ten characters and the players themselves are role-playing themselves put into the bodies isekai with the bodies oh! of these characters so okay okay so you are <laughs> we are us and yeah. in this world we are role-playing as us and you wake up one day and you are in dr robotnik's body <laughs> you are in the the professor from the uh she blind me with science music video <laughs> or just the the guy like it could be either okay. the, or the lady you got you got three characters you could pick from that music video. <laughs> you get um, so many options there are dark elves in this setting and it's not That's really clear what the difference fascinating is. nasa You've now opened up a world for implications and questions, and I need you to answer all of them. I am at, talking directly into your ear now. I just tried to move forward. I forgot that we got rid of the, like, shadow can get bigger and smaller. Yeah. <laughs> like, listen, NASA, you need to speak to me. The Hubble Space Telescope was uh, apparently acting between planes. Oh, that's cool. That's actually cool. That's I like that. Cool. Yeah. You do have to give it to him for that. Yeah. Let's you let's play for the queen in this setting. Hey, they got a non non binary human. That's nice. There we go. The there queen, we go. That's good. NASA reveals the existence of dark elves. <laughs> 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 uh, that's awesome. Fuck. Okay. I I feel better about this one than I do the Wendy's RPG. You know yeah, what I mean? Me too. This is this is like really cynical. It's just kind of funny. This is I try I. Do I trust NASA? Not necessarily, but like, do I like NASA more? Yeah, it has higher stock in my heart and my soul. I would wear a NASA shirt in like a lesbian way. <laughs> if I was trying to attract girls, I would wear I would wear a NASA shirt. Listen, they then everyone loves a NASA shirt. They're yeah. just stylish. They're cool. They say I'm a little bit of a science person, but I'm trendy as well. It's a blue shirt, like you know, I'm a little, I'm a little, a little sleek with it. I love fuck Wendy's forever, which does bring me to the question of like if you could get rid of two fast food chains, they're gone. You've you've eliminated them from the earth. They are they are gone forever. Their memories are remembered, but they no longer will exist in this world. You get two of them. Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A, big bang, boom, yeah, done, gone. gone. Absolutely. Uh, Popeye's reigns supreme. Culver's reigns is wet. Five guys you, is wet whenever I get it. You be very careful about your next words. <laughs> I just listen. The only times I've ever ordered Five Guys, the the bag came soaking, like sopping wet. It That's was grease, grease, baby. That's the fries. Yeah, I'm killing In and Out with a bullet. Mm, like I've never cool. had In and Out, but I think it would be the funniest one to get a reaction out of people. <laughs> and then Burger King. Burger that's King, fair. you've done nothing for me or anybody in years. Yeah, no, that's that's fair. Um... <laughs> I would leave Wendy's just because of like I think that I think the fact that Critical Role did that is funny, and <laughs> I think that like I laughed when I heard the the bit about it in the mm -hmm. fourth, fourth episode of a, a Party of One, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so I feel like I just want more people to be able to joke about that forever. I and I think that's fair. I am also realizing because I I read the words fantasy setting with twenty first century understanding of space and mm -hmm. I realized that that is just what the Outer Wilds is. I think that is true. I have not played the Outer Wilds, but it's true to my understanding. Oh, oh, buddy. I know. Oh, I've, buddy. I've heard it. The people have told me this. <sighs> it's okay. I'm normal. I'm normal now. <laughs> so did they like draw this map and then like put all this over it in Affinity Publisher? Sorry, now I'm just looking at like what's yeah. highlightable. <laughs> it had to have. Is this good audio? Do you all like this? Yeah, is this, is this good. Is this, is this good audio visual? Okay. Um, but yeah, very interesting. Uh, I'm curious, like, what exactly? So, so it came from. Uh... Okay, so apparently you can ask reporter questions. I'm not a reporter. Like, that's not something I do with this show. But it is hey, funny. Wait, we could video? be. Oh my god. <laughs> With the fucking dungeon synth, too? Let's go. Hang on, let me, let me turn no. on so y'all can hear it. They've got, like, this knockoff Lord of the Rings font on here. Yeah, that's... It's very funny. Wow. I love... <laughs> this is so funny. 
I love it. This see, this to me is like, yeah, this bangs. Like this is like yeah. this has got it. <laughs> like this is not cynical in the good. same way. This, this is, is like four people going, I could reach the kids. <laughs> this is this image, this green dragon, this like uh like jelly bee like this like gummy green dragon chasing after the Hubble telescope. This is like <laughs> like <laughs> this is you could literally hang on. Like you could you could open up Clip Studio Paint and like <laughs> It's just an asset you could download. Yeah. Well I, I was thinking <laughs> specifically what you could do is like uh where's Clip Studio Paint? Here we go. Like you open Clip Studio Paint, you get you get this bad boy open and uh -huh. you throw some like uh you throw some impact text on there. Like uh <laughs> Uh, the uh, bottom. Just write bottom text. Put it at the top of the page. That that would work. I was thinking I'm gonna fuck the Hubble Space Telescope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to fuck this telescope. Are you a bad enough dude to save Hubble? Hang on. I need to. I need to. It needs to be cut off in a slightly different way. <laughs> there. We... <laughs> okay. Um, my only my only beef, NASA, is that you called it a tabletop role playing game when it is an adventure module. Yes, it is an adventure module. I need you to use the proper dialogue here, okay? I need you to I need you to understand. Let me go back to the browser. <laughs> I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Sometimes we do bits on the show, and it's okay. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll talk about the the second story here, um, which is I guess less funny, but there's there's stuff to talk about here. Mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, this is the Crit Awards, uh, their 2024 award categories. They have a lot of them, uh, 40, 47 to be exact, which is... That's a lot of awards to yeah. exist in this world. Uh, it's it's an impressive amount, uh, um, and they're all, like, as usual, Crit Awards is all, like, vote, like, vote in, like, you, you know, mm -hmm. nominate someone and then, you know, they get voted on by the public, um... You know, I, 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 I certainly have my thoughts about this, um, but uh, I think it'd be cool to just kind of look at some, what some of these are first, uh, just like the general overall categories. It's so, interesting that they have. Okay, so there's the section the best of their games of the year. This is the first time I've seen this, yes. and so it is interesting that they like have it broken off by like indie games, and then like Paizo, and then Paradox Interactive, Dungeons and Dragons. I've, I don't know what Chaosium is at all. This is one of those things where I'm like, wow, the circle that I am in is so different than the circle that other people are in. Yeah, <laughs> it's a very different we... world. But I, I, I like that they're broken apart. But it, again, these kind of vote-in ones are always just going to end up being a popularity contest, right? Yeah, that's kind of the issue with that. Um, I mean, I know, I, I definitely know some folks who basically refuse to submit their shows to like stuff like this because it's you know yeah. it, it can be kind of degrading it's like you put something out and then it's like mm -hmm. all right whoever has the most like the biggest fan base <laughs> whoever's got the, whoever's got the biggest fucking league gets it yeah it's one of those things that like i don't know why why hurt why do it i i i'm not an award person like mm -hmm. i never really have been but i have friends who who are but what I am is like a person who I love to see reviews and responses and people and like people talking about shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that to me is going to be more beneficial than a review than a a reward ever is. But also that's just because I do know in my heart that like my work is not the kind of stuff that gets rewards because my work is silly. Yeah, that is that is very real. Um I, I am, like, hey, at least they have that they have a non AI thing. That's a good, that's a good thing. That's a good. Let's we'll take dubs where we can get them. Frankly, yeah. Um, I will probably be submitting stuff to this just because, like, you know, I, uh, yeah. I, 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 I don't have work that's necessarily like uh, out there in in that way. But uh, mm -hmm. I, I do definitely understand why others don't. I know. Um, on the on the AI uh, the. AP side of things, I know like Minnesota Web Fest is a judge based, uh, yeah, uh, one for example. And I I know Minnesota Web Fest is like run well, like that is a thing that they're like 
they're trying to be as like they're trying to make it a well won run award show in a way that like other TTRPG awards aren't necessarily. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, they're trying to make sure that it is like a equitable place. Yeah, I mean, that that is that is also true. Like, I mean, not to be uh, not to be controversial mm-hmm. on here, yeah. but like you yeah, know, yeah. you get like uh, Diana Jones, uh, mm-hmm. fucking, you know, giving awards to like the military guy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, you know, it's it's yep. uh, it is it is definitely not uh, not all. Like not all of these awards that ha- that are, have judges, you know, the ju- judges are not built equally. I guess is what I'll say. Yeah, but... it's it's. What is there to say about Gen Con? It is it is. There is a old guard that does exist in different places, and it is odd how little effect every single group has on each other's group. There isn't a TTRPG community in that larger scale, in the sense that, like, I again, I looked at this. They have an award category for chaosium. I've never heard that word in my life, and I'm Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> like, it's 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 it is. There are so many different groups that are doing shit, and so like to feel like you are tied to, oh, this represents the 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 hobby or this represents the medium. Like these people here, and you're like, well, who are those people? Yeah. Do they really? Like, why do I think that? And like the Gen Con board is like, that's a really fun board game convention. It is kind of a board game convention at its core though. So like, why would I expect their awards to ever sing in the way I want them to? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you could be hearing about like, you know, fucking uh, like Armorster in a community for mm-hmm. like, you know, six years. And then mm-hmm. like the, <laughs> you know, the, these like, a panel might give an award to like fucking Frunkle Stump, the the OSR game, uh, and you'll be like, "What the hell is Frunkle Stump?" It's like, "Well, there's a big community for that." Uh, yeah, and great. it's just like I've never heard of it, but they do exist, and it's like, all right, maybe awards aren't the best barometer for success in this in this hobby in this industry because like. Yeah, it's it's there are so many different people you can't mash it together. You can't get a good read in the same way that like movies and music are ubiquitous and tabletop games are very segmented and I think they're better for being segmented. Yeah, I agree. It's I like it more to find what I am looking for instead of going like, okay, let time to start digging. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. Like I don't think like just being like, you know, I don't think over genreifying is good, but I also think like genre mm-hmm. is a very useful tool. Yeah, I love I love genre. Like mm-hmm. I don't know, it's but it is like you. It is like you can't boil things down to genre. You can't boil things down to like I don't know what was it like six years ago the OSR versus indie or whatever. And it's like I don't know. You're saying these words like they have a deeper meaning outside of just the mechanics that exist there. <laughs> like I mean, I love a chart. Is that bad? It's it's one of those things that like. <laughs> I so much of how I interact with art is finding the things that I like and finding the people that I like and then slowly spreading in that way. Mm -hmm. And then there are also like, when I was younger, I would be more involved with discourse and I would be much unhappier for it because why does there need to be a unifying theory about whether or not one game is good or bad? or like morally bad and when you say morally bad it's like okay the 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 theming on this might be a little weird you know what i mean they got it's gold like, points in this one yeah it's like i don't know man it's not my fucking business dude <laughs> yeah let them have their fun i'm shadow the hedgehog <laughs> you're just shadow the hedgehog you're just i'm just shadow the hedgehog song, yeah. that song the hedgehog series this is all i want to do this is all i want to be godspeed for the rest uh, of you shadow generations yeah <laughs> i Here's the thing. Yes, a little bit. Mm-hmm. I didn't really like Generations. I'm more of a... I, this, this is going to sound absurd. Mm-hmm. I like the Sonic games for the story. Okay. And so I'm an advent... So Forces was kind of... Like, Forces was... I enjoyed Forces. Frontier is kind of like my second favorite Sonic game behind Sonic Adventure 2. 
uh, actually third favorite Sonic game because it goes Sonic Adventure 2, Sonic 06, Sonic Frontiers, Sonic Adventure oh. 1, <laughs> Shadow the Hedgehog. Like, and those are like my top. But like, I, <laughs> I so I know Generations is going to have good levels. I don't really like the gameplay of Sonic games. I just want to see my characters interacting with each other. That's and that's really kind of why the murder of Sonic the Hedgehog is like one of my favorite Sonic games. Oh, I still got to get around to that. Shit. That's, it's so that's good. so good. Yeah. It's the, what if the Blormos talked? Yeah. If they released a JRPG with the Sonic characters, it'd be over for me. Hey, they did. If they released one that wasn't on the (laughs) DS. Yeah. All right. Um, I should just download that and play it. I should find my DS. Yeah. So uh, I guess uh, point of the story uh, when, when I, when I submit the dub coat for one of these, just, uh, uh, Please vote yeah. for it. Thank you. <laughs> parody, parody, parody. Riley, Riley had all the negative opinions. <laughs> uh, smiles. No, I, I listen. I'm I'm willing to be a little bit. I'm I'm a little bitchy about some of these things on here because like <laughs> I feel like I don't think that the people who are go are going to be making decisions on all this stuff are actually are actually watching my show because mm-hmm. like I think to some degree there's a thing in like a lot of teacher RPG spaces where it's like. Uh, you say, "Oh my god, I love that thing," and it's like you didn't watch that. You, yeah. you maybe looked at the cover for that. <laughs> like, uh-huh. Well, um, again, that's it. That's it with any commu- with any yes, kind of art, right? Absolutely. Is like you got those people for movies and music and TV and every books and everything all the way going down, and like, <laughs> it, it does What's protect being a little bitchy and a little bit weird, though. Like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think the, you're right. the degree to which there is like a kind of glimmer over a lot of stuff in in media generally, but I think I think like uh, for for me in, in teacher RPGs, like it does help me be like, hey, I'm just gonna put a pet play game on King's, on Kickstarter, and no one will be able to do anything about it. <laughs> just let it rip. That's the thing, and I guess that's the biggest thing is like truly nobody can stop you, so fucking do it. You know, <laughs> like that's that's I. You can you can literally just I I I put up a Kickstarter and then I went and found a tax guy later. Like yeah. you could do things in any fucking order and nobody can stop you. Exactly. All right. <laughs> uh, let's take like let's take five uh, if that's all right. Yeah. We, we will uh, we will get to the last story which uh, showed up just recently. So yeah, I will uh, see you in a bit. Bye. Goodbye for now.
Hello everyone, we are back with Riley Hopkins, and we're going to be talking about uh, a another thing that's kind of wild. Um, so, uh, Games on Demand, which is a mm -hmm. a, a group for uh, tabletop role-playing games that shows up frequently at uh, at PAX. I, I think basically every PAX, uh, at least PAX East and PAX U, PAX U I don't know beyond that. Um, they have uh, put out a a response to uh, Kidia Gaming, which is a, um, a a company that has a booth at PAX East, um, and is also uh, uh, in uh, on the PAX East website and in the PAX Nav app. Um, uh, who, uh, according to uh, uh, Games in Demand, is an extension of the government of Saudi Arabia through the Public Investment Fund, um, and they've noted that the Saudi Arabian government has countless human rights violations, often carried out through its court system. And they're disappointed to learn that the group will be present and featured. They've said they're going to be there, but it seems like this, the way that this read to me is that it's kind of a threat to say like, hey, mm -hmm. maybe consider not bringing these people next time or else we might not show up. Which, you know, uh, I imagine we would be pretty rough for, for PAX. Uh, <laughs> because like, I don't, I don't know if they have the money to like set up their own version of Games on Demand. Um, mm -hmm. uh, for... Oh yeah, sorry. No, no, no. Yeah, no. I, I'm just, I'm just listening, agreeing. It's, 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 it's. This is one of those things that, like, I, I very well know what my wheelhouse is and where it is, and like what I know about it and what I don't. Uh, when it comes to specifically stuff that is like a larger foreign power with foreign with with uh, with a uh, with human rights issues. I know we become we very quickly can risk coming into a loaded a, a like a thing that we that like we could there, there could be a risk for people to take the wrong messages from it mm -hmm. the thing that always kind of bothers me with stuff like this is i'm like well if we're if we're going to talk about human rights right now i'd like to let's take a look at like some u.s companies <laughs> Doc, yeah. like yeah, where I we guess. are, man. Like, dog, look around a little bit. Like, we got stuff we got to worry about at home right now. Yeah, that that was kind of my thought with it. Is that I think that there is, like, is it a good point that like there is some, you know, uh, you know, like I I, I you know I did some research on mm -hmm. this. Like, you know, Saudi Arabia has legal discrimination against women, migrants, uh, the accused, and human rights organizations. Mm -hmm. Um, but also. Like the U.S. has that, <laughs> like the U.S. has that in a lot of places. Uh, yeah, this is because this has been a thing in wrestling for years. Because like the WWE does get very, very buddy buddy with places that are that have questionable human rights, to say the extremely very least. Um, and it's it's just one of those things that like I feel like we begin to tiptoe on a line of xenophobia, but mm -hmm. I don't know enough to know where that line is or what any criticisms are true and which are just like fear mongering. You know what I mean? And so rascal did do some reporting on this. Uh, give me a duck username and yes. rascal rascal. I trust. Cause like that's, that's Lynn. I put that together. Yeah. I trust Lynn. Like this one of those things that like, okay, like somebody's going to be doing the research and I will read what they have, but like, I don't know shit about shit. Yeah. Uh, I, I just figured this would be interesting to bring up as a person, yeah. you know, I, I went to PAX EU this year and had a very good time. Uh, I actually did miss the, the Games on Demand, unfortunately, but uh, mm -hmm. um, I, uh, it is, it is interesting. I, um, I hope that, uh, you know, I, I, I hope that this does not, like, I hope that folks who are, you know, uh, talking about this and thinking about this are able to prioritize this from, as you said, like a purely uh, humanitarian angle and not a <laughs> not mm -hmm. a xenophobic no, yeah. xenophobic angle. And sometimes, as you said, like the distinction on that can be pretty unclear. Because um, mm -hmm. people will parrot like things that you agree with, and then you have to look at those and go like, now hold on, what else are you saying? And like following places like rascal i'm like okay i can trust that they are approaching this from the correct angle right but like there are sometimes i'll listen to a podcast and they'll talk about stuff like this and i'm like oh hold on what's going what's happening here what are you saying like like do i think that you are approaching this at like what is the angle that you are coming in at this with and like how to keep my head on a swivel you know what yeah. i mean um i do uh looking just at the 
Unfortunately, I do not have a Rascal subscription yet. Uh, I should. I got you. I got you. For the, the purpose of uh of of reading some of these for, you know, to to get some of this mm -hmm. this information. Um, but I do think like, it is it is notable that this mentions that, um, the Saudi Arabian government has this like quote unquote sports rock washing uh practice where the government uses investment in sports and games to wash over less savory press. Although like. That is the thing that's been reported by the Guardian readers and, and the Associated Press. Like, that could mm -hmm. just as easily be a narrative as it is a, you know, like, that's the sort of thing that newspapers are like, we're going to identify this connection and not really be clear if this is like, yeah, uh, I'd have to look more thoroughly into it. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Kind of it like... It's one of those things where just like, be aware of where your information comes from and what then. Yeah, it's big in soccer. It's also big in um in golf right now. Like. There is, it's all over the place. It's, 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 it's fascinating. And I truly, <laughs> it, 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 there are, there are reporters whose whole job it is, is to unravel this. Yeah. Um, apparently the sports watching, watching term is a term that's been identified by, or it's been coined by Grant Liberty, which is a UK, UK nonprofit organization. Um, so, and it seems like they have like a pretty, you know, they are pretty, directly you know that they're, they're this is their thing right now i guess mm -hmm. um, so you know it's uh these things kind of get like parroted i think very easily by news where it's like okay so rascal is like the guardian readers and the associated press have reported this and then you know you look at the guardian and it's like this is from grant liberty um mm -hmm. not not to criticize the uh, rascal's reporting right but just to say yeah. like these things can become very easily like obfuscated um mm -hmm. and i i do think it's i do think it's worth looking, looking at like yeah how and why these terms get created and uh and, and stuff like that yep 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 every term you use every short short hand lingo that you use does come for, from somewhere right like and like where does it come from and does it have roots in a place you don't want it to have roots in is always an interesting like journey to play this happened right like last week on twitter right where someone was like there are cathedrals everywhere for the if for those who look to see <laughs> it's like yeah you know where that's fun <laughs> you know that's fun it's like some right-wing maniac tweeting about a water bottle <laughs> like... yeah that's not I um I think I figured out how to get Shadow to roll his eyes. I like Good. lean forward and I go like, "Uh," and I like look up. And I was like, okay, <laughs> Good. Good. whatever. Um. Oh my god, my birds! My birds! They've been missing this whole. Oh, wait, oh been the here birds! This whole time. Okay. So actually, Bring the birds. Here's, here's all we have to do. Apocrypha has to leave. Uh, here. You know what? These two were here, here the whole time. Don't don't think about it. Um, Apocrypha is coming back because we're gonna go over the mail now. Um, I, Ready I, messed your up by having, I messed up by having the birds here for too long but you know what we'll get them some feed it'll be okay we'll um, be okay they'll be fine uh yeah so um what's happening here i'm okay we're gonna we're i'm going to not read this email and because <laughs> it's the, i'm confused by it uh we're gonna read these emails instead okay um so yeah, they, they had their day off. S smiles. Um, <laughs> uh, the first question is from Ira Prince, who uh, is doing art on Interstitial 2E. Um, oh, hell yeah. Uh, which, fish, uh, which fictional characters, which, uh, hang on, actually, I'll send this to you first and then I'll read it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, which fictional characters would each of you want to make up your party if you were isekai into a campaign of Interstitial? You were in there as a one to one self insert, of course. I have always, like, I've been wanting to run a game where I just play in as a character on interstitial. Like we put Riley in there. I think that would be extremely <laughs> funny, but I haven't done it yet. <laughs> um, if I wanted to make, which fiction because each of you want to take the place of, I, mm, I think you put, you put me in to star Wars in the clone wars era. You get me in there two years before the end of that bad boy. <laughs> And put me in the body of anyone who has a thought, and I could make that thing work. I could, I could, I could fix it. <laughs> I would have handled it in a way that Obi Wan could not. I, I think the question is, if you were yourself, then who would who would be in your party? 
oh if i was myself yes. so i am like i i don't hit the car and i wake up in the body of obi-wan kenobi i i i am there present yes and it can be any I, it can be any like interstitial interstitializable <laughs> character so any character <laughs> i this is See, I this is like when I go to bed, I like do my little like play pretend <laughs> in your head, like the pre dream where you're like, time to get my brain warmed up, hopefully, to dream and this pathing. <laughs> but like, uh, I think that I would, I think I would have to go right now. We would go, I think I want to hang out <laughs> with the worst vibes crew. I want S Sadako Hojo. <laughs> From Higarashi. I, I want Shuka Sakurai from Neo Tuui. <laughs> I, I think we put Surge of the Tenric from Sonic in there. Nightmare blunt rotation. I. <laughs> so if I were to fall through, as Audiovore is saying in the chat, a, a portal created by the Huffle uh, Space, <laughs> Space Telescope, I, I would want. I mean, I said Nick Valentine earlier. I think I need to go with Nick Valentine. I think he needs to be there. I think he would be able to help guide me through the difficulties. <laughs> um, I would want... Uh, not not to draw someone from my own game, but I think I would want Dr. Mindfuck from Sapphic World. Um, <laughs> because I think she would help me be more evil. Uh, it's important. We're all and... trying to be more evil. Oh, Aerith's good. Aerith's good. Aerith in the in the shit eating gang in the bad in the bad girl gang have Aerith there as well and I think that she could hang in a way that would frustrate everybody. <laughs> Good. Uh, I mean, I've been thinking about Barkus Root from Baldur's Gate three recently. The little fucking gnome. I think I need Barkus Root with me because I think I think he'll he'll tell me which way to go uh, when I, when I get lost. <laughs> <laughs> Keep you on the, the straight and narrow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Thank you for that question, Ira. It's a really good question. Um, next is um, from uh, from Goblin, from my my frequent, from VIP, from Champion uh, Question Sender Goblin. Very um, important Goblin, Goblin. AKA, mm, mm, AKA, skip it up, data. Yeah. Um, <laughs> First question. Um, oh, these are interesting. Uh, okay, I might need to look through these to see which of these would be relevant <laughs> to you. Um, I think you might have some opinions on this. Uh, I, can, I can hang. You, you put a question in front of me, I'll get you an answer. <laughs> uh, do you think there's anything TRPG designers can learn from narrative wargaming? Oh, I, yes. I think that, like, there is a fear of, like, having a motherfucker break out that like measuring tape and like figuring out how far like a, a shot goes. What is the arc of a thing? I think that that style of wargaming has something super special to it. And if you were to fuse that with like a, a proper, like not a proper, but like fuse that with abilities that then like had that same precision, but then had like a fucking vibe to them. You know what I mean? Like, Oh, a long range missile. Sure. Whatever. But like, it doesn't do damage. What, what effect does then that have on, on like this area here or whatever, like telling a story through war gaming could rule in a great way in the way that crusaders King crusader Kings rules. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, I, I wish, I wish minis tabletop like I wish minis board games in the way of like BattleTech and uh and and Warhammer and Hero Clicks were all just more accessible to me because <laughs> I would I would that's I'd spend my life I'd spend my life doing that when I was in high school we had a Hero Clicks uh we built a city for Hero Clicks out of like shoe boxes uh, and stuff like a 3D city and then moved around that with it it was awesome uh, <laughs> God love that. Um, I'm going to suggest two games for people who are interested mm -hmm. in kind of the, the intertwining of these things. Uh, Jess Levine's Planet Fist, which I've been playing a lot of recently. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very good PBTA war game um, mm -hmm. uh, inspired by Planet Side, but like increasingly getting more and more weird with it. Uh, I, like, oh, yeah. There's a boss that's just Frankenstein. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a good game. I recommend people play it. Uh, currently, I think you, you can only get the like basic edition, but the 
uh, the version that like I've been playing is Faithless Edition, and it's really good. I think you can get it in the Discord for the game. Uh, but yeah, recommend that. And I'm also going to recommend, this is not necessarily a war game, I'm going to recommend Oleander Gardens Against the, Apo Against the Apocalypse, which came out recently, um, which is an anti-narrative teacher RPG. Uh, Let's it's go. It's free to download, and it is, the, the, the core rulebook is basically just you are people in a squad, uh, in a squadron of soldiers who, I think I talked about this uh, in a recent episode, but you're, you're, you're a squadron of soldiers and the apocalypse is coming, the Antichrist is sending ghouls to kill you. They have guns. Uh, you have guns. <laughs> and it's just, you use formulas to calculate the uh, the speed and like uh, loss of velocity and mass of bullets as they fly into people and uh, how survivable those, you know, those injuries are. And then like, you know, every, every day you're going into town spending a certain amount of time for each step for each you know <laughs> for for crouching for, for going prone uh for putting up fences and then during the night you were attacking an increasing number of of these ghouls who eventually become completely unsurvivable um sweet that's okay goblins you can send any questions and i will simply save them if i don't think they are uh <laughs> uh things like you know, i trust goblins yeah. We can, I can hang. I can, I got it. I got it. I'm ready to party. Yeah. Um. Let's see. I don't know if I know any, anything about this one. Um. Maybe you. Right, if you put, if you want to put them in front of me, I'm down to Here. like. Let me know. If, let me know if you know anything about this, and then we'll. This is the question. <laughs> I'll just send that to you right. before I read through it. Okay. No, I have not. <laughs> okay. I know of. I know of. Uh like this interaction i know what this i know i know these words but i know them not in this order yeah I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, i will save this i don't know maybe, maybe will chips know something about this um, or andrew gillis or grief uh, uh what's this next one? Oh, this, this is a perfect one for you uh this is uh here, I'm going to post this. Uh, what do you think the place of TTRPG media outside of actual plays should be? Uh, well, they have the the risk of inherent... Uh, well, they also have the risk inherent to actual plays of making unrealistic standards. They do not mask themselves as something that is achievable through play. What do I think the place of TTRPG media outside... So, like the question being, outside of actual play, what is other TTRPG media? Yeah. Like, well, and, what, and what what and what what should it be? Like... Again, this is where like you could have like you like you can imagine a licensed show, right? Like you can imagine stuff like that of like, oh, there was a Dungeons and Dragons movie or whatever. That's I have in my brain imagined the like, okay, I I have I have locked a executive in a elevator, and I'm like, you know, crossovers, boy, howdy, do I have a thing for you? <laughs> <laughs> what if you adapted four seasons of a podcast? Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like. I like, I think the messiness of actual play makes it almost inherently untransferable to another media, right? Mm -hmm. In the same way that you can't make a House of Leaves movie, like the actual play isn't just the story that's happening there. It is the the people interacting at that table. And then when you step further from that, you're like, okay, well, what else? How do you represent TTRPGs in a way outside of that? Like... I think I think that Dungeons and Dragons movie got it pretty well, fucking right, right? Is like you have like, oh, there's a vibe about this where like these characters are acting too cool. There are weird little things going on that say that this is a game. Like Dungeon Meshi also, like Delicious in Dungeon, if you told me was secretly a a TTRPG media, like I would also get that because it has a lot of world building and it has like weirdos doing weird shit. I think that that in itself is like, TTRPG media can be anything, and that is why it is hard to boil it down to TTRPG media. Yeah, I agree. Uh, in terms of reviews, uh, I mean, obviously, um, oh god, what's the name of that one? The the really good one, uh, the one that Wild say. Uh, um, uh, Quinn's Quest, Quinn's Quest from uh, from PM, people like games. 
oh, really yeah. good stuff. And then also, um, uh, 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 Zygmunt Thotep on, uh, on YouTube does really, really good teacher RPG stuff and has been on here, has been on here. So, uh, yeah, that would be my, in terms of just like, you know, not, uh, st- stuff talking about teacher RPGs. I mm-hmm. think that's a good, a good, uh, good couple. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the thing is like, teach RPGs is someplace that there has not been, there wasn't a ton of criticism in like outside of like dice breaker. Now rascal, I think is like a place that I can actually trust or like, a uh, Dr. Emily Friedman does a lot of good work in te- yes. in about, in about actual play and TTRPG. There's like people now who are interested in doing the good job and the good work in it and, and being able to shout out those people like Lynn and like, in like uh Dr. Friedman that is like, okay, like, these people will come up with interesting things to say and will do research that then will make other people start thinking more critically and it will continue to fall out from there, which allows TTRPG to have more of a media landscape in the same way where like, I don't know, that's different than the, this is how, this is my GM advice podcast. You know what right. I mean? <laughs> yeah. Um, I would also point towards, um, uh, what is it? Read the fucking manual um, with uh, Aaron King. And uh, I forget who the mm. one that, 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 that podcast is pretty good. Um, Sweet. Yeah. Uh, so next question is, uh, I think this is actually really, really. Uh, this is, I think, this is a question you will have thoughts on. Um, okay. Uh, what inspiration do you think can be taken from video game RPGs in this medium? <laughs> uh, well, of course, setting and tone is free reign. Do you think there's any wisdom to be taken from the system, the systems digital RPGs use? And do you think there is a future where someone uh, finds a way to take advantage of the power of digital programs? Uh, while keeping the freedom of a teacher RPG. This is what's fascinating to me is like, like this was a, every time I play a video game, I'm like, well, how do you do this in a tabletop game? Or like, how do you switch this around? And how do you move this? Like, I mean, I showed, I, I when I was talking about games I was making, like one of them is like labeled the Materia TTRPG, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like slotting things in and out. And like with the power of spreadsheets, technically you can do quick problem math solving if you have the formulas set up right. I, and it's also, this is an interesting question, because when you think about it, usually video games will take from tabletop RPGs because those are mechanics that work, right? And so, like, you had, like, KOTOR, which was just, like, D&D at the time. Yeah. And you have, like, Baldur's Gate, which is a D&D 5e. Like, this is a thing that, like, has always been happening. And to do it in reverse is fun. It's just difficult because you can't ask, what are the mechanics here? You're asking, what can the mechanic, what are the mechanics doing here? What is the effect they are having on me? And how do you replicate that effect? Like the link system is an effect is a attempt to capture what kingdom hearts does, where, you know, Sora is connected. Sora goes to worlds and meets people mm-hmm. and those make connections and they make connections with him. And then he sees them again later. And he's like, hell yeah, it's stitch. I'm so excited to see stitch. That's a link. And I'm not going to be able to, go to different worlds. I'm not going to be able to do the gummy ship. I'm not going to be able to like do the fighting or like adding this character to the party and moving through. But what I can do is I can make a thing that makes you write down a person's name and remember it. And I can tell you to play pretend. And that's like not mechanically the same as kingdom hearts, but it is pulling on those same emotions and the same threads. And like, I think when taking inspiration from a video game or frankly, from any, again, any kind of medium is like, don't look at the don't look at like the water wheel that's spinning look at the water that's being pushed by it right Right. like what is the effect and i can do another thing that's going to push water yeah i would also gesture towards um in terms of like you know ttrpg is taking things from video games um celestial bodies has its its grid um uh which i think is it's like kind of you know like technical character sheet um Mm -hmm. I haven't Which, heard of that. I'm I wanna I'm gonna look it up. Yeah, so I I can't find it. I'm not sure if it's in the book or let me attach to the book, but it's um I know that there is some sort of like really high oh. high fidelity tool for celestial bodies. Celestial bodies is a mech game with a grid, um, like that you oh. use to make mechs. And I remember at one point seeing a tool that was you you basically just move stuff like along the grid and it would like change stuff about the mech. But I'm not sure oh, where that is because I'm not seeing that, that on the rules. page. Grid. I mean, I guess that's also CompCon for Lancer, right? Yeah, that is also very much CompCon. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I think just generally, like, 
I think also just like, you know, I think there's a lot of, I mean, obviously like pastiche, right. Is like, mm -hmm. it, you can, you can teach RPGs are always doing pastiche. Like, like pastiche is, yeah. <laughs> pastiche is like bread and butter. If you want to make a really lazy teach RPG, not, you know, not lazy, but, um, if you make a really quick teach RPG, find mm -hmm. something that you like and just make a game that, that is just that, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I think that there's there's more to be done in terms of putting your own spin on it. Um, that that makes it you know that makes it good. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, I I I think that there's a lot that you can do with 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 just like you know, game pastiche and like drawing mechanics and ideas that you really like from games and figure out how to do yeah. them in a you know pen and paper. I think you know, there's there's fun stuff there. There is a. A folk artist, like a like like a folk punk artist, uh, Chuck Reagan, said on a live album, uh, you know, the best songs that are ever written are you just take what you like and then you just you just steal it, you just steal it full fucking cloth. <laughs> and he like plays "Fixin' to Die," which is a Buka White song, and then he plays a song that's just the same chords but his own thing. And I'm like, that's it. <laughs> you just you just take the damn thing. And like I. I, I inspiration is so important and like Agreed. seeing things that are inspired by work that you are familiar with or seeing the the connection between things is so fucking cool yeah I was I was doing a, a sift through I mean I'm still working on this but I was doing a sift through my game sapphic world recently and I was like how much of this is references to other stuff and I was like well that's like four or five dragon's dogma dragon's dogma references in like <laughs> you know the first bit of reading like in as much space yeah you know like in, inspiration and you know referencing and drawing ideas that's that's really from anything mm -hmm. like not just from video games but like i think that's really what makes things fun and you know in conversation with the the culture and yeah mm -hmm. um, i think i think i think i don't think a skill tree has been done correctly mm -hmm. in a tabletop game in a long time and i would right. like to see what a good skill tree looks like yeah because i feel like often the costs are too high or it's like mm -hmm. the stuff that's there isn't that interesting um yeah I'm well because yeah because you hit the fucking plus one plus two shit that you don't want and like you also don't want to lock like re-rolls behind the first thing in the skill tree or whatever right but like there's something there that can be taken as inspiration somehow and i, th I think that would be a that would be like a very that would be a thing that would then be taken and inter iterated upon is if somebody could create that. Yeah, I agree. I'd love to I'd love to see the Caves of Cud teach RPG, where it's just like you have the skill trees from Caves of Cud. Uh mm -hmm. I, th I think someone might actually be working on that, but you know, I want to see it. Let's go. Uh, Let's go. Uh, uh, uh speaking of inspiration, Goblins mentions uh, in the chat a uh, record of a Lotos War, which is like very you know, very much a D a D, &D anime. Uh so you know, real. <laughs> it's it's real and it can't hurt you. <laughs> this is definitely a question for me, I think. Take it. But uh if you have opinions on it, feel free to share. Um <laughs> So this is uh well I find no objection to King and Teach RPGs. I struggle to find myself being comfortable to explore those topics in a casual friend group anytime soon. Wonder if keeping designs for more one on one experiences in mind, due to the prevalence of monogamy and shame, may make King Teach RPGs more accessible. Keep in mind, this is not condemnation or anything of the sort, and I totally understand the idea of expressly making things that are not pleasing to the cultural uh, hegemony. Uh, yeah, I actually I, I agree with that. I think, like, I think that there is a there is a role for, like, so, uh, solo and two player kink teach RPGs. Like, you know, you have uh, um, uh, I, I know that I'm just trying to think of like solo. You you have uh, mermaids touch your touch your dick. Maybe you have the princess with mm -hmm. the first dick uh like th <laughs> there are a lot of those in that vein um there's the the water slide one which i think is is like two player um so yeah i would say generally um i i do agree i, th I think those can be more accessible but also i think that maybe there's a space for like you know some folks who might not have thought they would be comfortable originally uh exploring you know a kink in teach rpg like i've, I've seen in a lot of the games that I run, where it's like, I don't know if I'm fully comfortable with, you know, Kank, and I'll be like, okay, we're not going to touch that. And then eventually, like, you know, if, if it's like Sapphic World or uh, my friend Lil, it's Euphoria 2180, like, eventually it'll just be like, 
naturally that person will wind up being like one of the horniest persons in the group <laughs> in the group um and i think this is true about any genre element honestly where it's like you know horror or uh mm -hmm. or action like i think you wind up with people who might come into a space and say you know i'm un i'm uncomfortable with this and then you know you, you don't touch on it and then they they feel comfortable and then they might explore it themselves uh so i think a lot of that just winds up being like you know what are what are hard boundaries what are soft boundaries uh and always respecting you know a soft mm -hmm. boundary as if it is a, is a hard boundary but uh being open to folks uh you know kind of kind of exploring things on their own and and, and finding finding uh, their answers to that stuff it turns out in life you live and you learn and you add things and you change as a person and, <laughs> and, and every, things are flexible if you if you allow them to be flexible yeah um yeah, I, I guess uh, my point being, uh, yes, I agree, and also. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but not stopping there. Yeah. Uh, before I go on to the next, do you, do you have any additional thoughts on that? I do not. That is, It is outside of my wheelhouse in a very totally real fair. way. Uh, all right. <laughs> uh, next question. Uh, do you think there are any ideas ingrained with common sense? Oh, sorry, hang on, wait. I'll, I'll also post this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, do you think there are any ideas ingrained within common sense TTRPG design that need to be especially challenged? Anything from player group size to the amount of characters controlled by a single player? Well, I think those are pretty good examples, honestly. <laughs> I I think a common sense TTRPG design thing is you need to roll for a thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that that needs to be challenged. I think sometimes if something's dope, it works. <laughs> I, I I think more people need to like embrace that. And then also you can tell your DM no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Like, like there's there's still people even in like indie circles that say that that really like kind of like squint at like telling a dn no or like going like oh can i like oh but the, you set this up and it's like mm -mm, we can roll back the clock and anything you could throw away a whole episode yeah. i have i have gone in like interstitial season one we stopped that recording and then went back and changed the entire back half of it because we didn't like yeah. it <laughs> like you can you can just stop shit and rewrite it because yeah you're playing a game but you're also writing a story together and your friends crucially your friends and people crucially <laughs> yeah um i would also say uh the idea that venture games should have coin uh i i know i kind of joked about this earlier but i, I do genuinely think like the idea that a, an adventure game can't be exciting if it doesn't have like currency i think mm -hmm. is something that i'd really like to see explored and, and push past um I, what part of what part of your your brain says that? Is it maybe the the capitalism you've been living with that tells <laughs> you that you must have monetary value for your things? Yeah, exactly. Like I've I've seen so many really good. I've I've seen and played so many like really good like communist mutualist like gift economy type games recently, and like I think that they make the sacrifices you have to make to like get things more interesting. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I am like taking on a debt for this person, or going like going on a, a journey for them, or giving them mm -hmm. a thing that I treasure. Like, I think that's way more interesting than I'm going to give you 10 of my funny bucks and then you're going to give me a sword. I am giving you 14 gil in yeah. an exchange. Um, and it lets you think more about, like, the things that your character needs rather than, like, you know, I want an enchantment on my sword. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I need, a, I need a boat to get to this place. Like, I, I think, I don't know. I, I, like, I like really, like, physical and and gift economy ish and like mm -hmm. uh david graber pilled style uh teacher pg writing and i'd love to see more of it mm -hmm. um, and the other thing is like i think players should just be able to make shit up about their characters when it yes. happens it's just the like yeah i think we know each other or i've seen i've seen this person already like create those connections because like i mean this is all obviously saying that like you're at a healthy table where people are talking to each other. Cause if you're not, then like, what the fuck are we doing here? Like, yeah, none of this advice works cause you're in a bad table, but like in a good table with your friends and your family and like people that are like playing to play a game together and not playing to win, then you are going to be able to like explore and trust each other in this weird way. And like a thing that Marn did during interstitial infinity is there's times where she just like handed us the basketball and said, go wild tiger. <laughs> like we just check in and be like, is this okay? And she'd be like, yep. And like yell from the porch and let us tell our own story. <laughs> you know what I mean? Good. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, I, I think, I think that like GM control needs to be, 
I think we need to kill the GM in our head. I think we need to kill the uh the Matt Mercer Brenly Mulligan in our head. Mm -hmm. Um and like, you know, those are great DMs, but those are DMs. Those are dungeon mm -hmm. masters. And like we're mm -hmm. we're trying to do something different. Like we're trying to do something that's more collaborative. And I well there is something there is something specifically <laughs> I'm sorry to do this as somebody yeah, who's I've just been place. watching a lot of Dimension 20, so I actually have a lot of I like opinions on the way that Brendan runs games. Hmm. Is like and again, no DM is on a pedestal because everyone can just do that. You can just play pretend. That's all that is. It's playing pretend. But like there's something very special about the way that like his table does just say, I think I know this person. Or like, oh, this is a thing that I have a base in. And he goes, okay. And then he hands them the mic. You know what I mean? It's a very, it's a friend group that is so tight and a role playing group that's so smooth that you sometimes don't notice it. Yeah, absolutely. But that is a collaborative show in a very real way. And I think that that is something that I would like people to watch more and like stuff like that. Because like, if you're going to pick a big, big time D and D show to watch, like I'd rather it, it be the one where people are like communicating across the table to each other in goal posting and then you have like the you you clearly have like safety conversations and like that shit all happening like that and friends at the table both have this like yes absolutely we are listening to we, we are a, a group of friends that are communicating outside of this show yeah 100 percent. i i hope hope that we hope that we get away from certain things <laughs> but i hope that we <laughs> hope that we lean towards other things and that's what having an opinion is <laughs> <laughs> thanks for coming uh, out tonight everybody <laughs> yeah uh and then i have one last question from goblin uh, goblin sent seven questions by the way uh, thank you goblin <laughs> the seventh um uh let me oh this is interesting this is an interesting thought i I'm I, this this I think this would be interesting to talk about. Is this a case of me being simply uninformed? Or are there more teacher RPGs that focus on uh, women loving women than men loving men? If I'm simply wrong, I'd like to know. And if not, I'd like to hear your thoughts about why this might be the case. I feel like this question might be shrying dangerously close to include boys too stuff. So if you're um, yeah, I um, I think that's really interesting. I honestly. I think it's just that there's a lot of trans women out here. <laughs> like, I, I, I was I was trying to find the way to say that same thing. <laughs> yeah. I, and I also think it's like the communities that we are a part of is like mm -hmm. we are going to tabletop tabletop RPG in like our community at a at a saying an indie level means fucking nothing. But like at a at a at a at a at the level that we are as far as like reach and growth and like what our what like the size of our games are and how much they sell is dominated by trans women because like they are making banger shit. <laughs> and so like not that that then ties into sexuality, but it is just like one of those things where it's like, well there's statistically more women here. So <laughs> I do think like I'm I'm going to project a theory, uh, as as an autistic trans woman myself. So like, there's there's the idea that like, you know, uh, it's not that there are it's not that tr being autistic causes you to become trans. It's that if you are trans and then you are also autistic, you are going to have the thought process to be like, hey, I might be trans. Um, <laughs> and I kind of feel like, you know, the people who have already made that hurdle are probably also going to be like asking questions about why they're playing D&D. &D. <laughs> like, if you're asking questions about gender, you might be asking questions about system. And I feel like that kind of might impact the the fact that there's so many trans women in, in indie teacher RPG. But also, it might just be, like, you know, a hobby. Like, you know, the, these sorts of hobbies den, tend to pull in a lot of trans women. And if you ask a lot of questions about system, that's going to lead to you asking questions about plurality. And that's just, you know, mm -hmm. the step one, step two, step three. Yes, very true. Uh, yeah, a, a lot of plural trans women in THRPG, I think, as well. Or, uh, or bang for your buck, <laughs> make yeah. one, make five friends with one. It's the way to fucking do it. Listen, uh, I'm I'm out here. Uh, I I I write, and then my head made edits, and it's good. <laughs> it works. <laughs> it got, got more energy. Um. Uh, yes, th there is actually a thirsty sword lesbians uh, MLM setting. Which is very good, by the way. It's by Lucian Khan. It's it's very very good. It has fagchins, which I don't think I can say on Twitch, but I will. Um, uh, 
the idea that being autistic makes you more prone to asking questions and stray away from normal questions because there's less social ba <laughs> barriers and taboos in the way your thought process is how yeah 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 that's absolutely true pokemon god totally totally real <laughs> Um, I was just thinking about that. Uh, what is the who's that rapper who runs like Mega Man like at the camera? You know who I'm talking about, oh, right? Easy. Yeah, the him like, tweeting like at people and going like, I had to tag them. And his audience <laughs> going, Jay you can't say that. Yeah, you cannot say that, Jay Easy. Uh, I had to support. Them. Yeah. There's a there's an interstitial listener that I love on Tumblr who is spicy Sanji to me. Because I cannot refer to them any other way, but I love them dearly. This is, <laughs> Thank you, Flavor Blast and Sanji. This is the Halimed, uh, like, uh, <laughs> you know, pe people being like Halimed. If I if I let you say the T slur, uh, uh, if if you were falling out of if you, if we were both falling out of a, a a plane, and the only way I would open my parachute is if, is if you said the T slur, would you do it? <laughs> and she's like, yes, I would, but I would be very sad. <laughs> I would never forgive myself. <laughs> uh, oh my god! Fuck. <laughs> she's so funny. I love her. Um. Uh. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Um. Oh. Well, those were those were the last uh, questions that I, that were in the email. Um. And we are we are we are going dangerously close to our end time. Um. <laughs> Uh, oh shit, I forgot to say, uh, not say, but I want to talk to you about God Game. Oh, God Game! We have to talk about God Game. I really, yes. really like God Game. Uh, it's God Game. Audience, for those of you that don't know, God Game is kind of, <laughs> they kind of made the best card game in the world. What if Hearthstone and Magic the Gathering smashed together? Mm. Then Calvin Ball. It is, it's beautiful to me. It's art to me. It is like the best kind of like, no, this happens. No, this happens. It is. But it's easy because you just read what it says on the card and it does it. Mar Marn and I have been making a bunch of cards and like we have we have moonshot based plans for God Game. Yes, yes, good. <laughs> um listen, I I'm I'm a big God Game head. Uh I I'm planning on, on running more of it. I, I really want to run it on stream at some point. Um it's, it's so fun good. on stream. It's so good. Yeah. Um I, I love watching the Sox BX ones. Uh, you know, good, good shit. Um, and uh, it's it's on tabletop sim. People check it out. It's it's good. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 free, and you just have to like the rules themselves are complicated, mm -hmm. and you're like, what's happening here? And then you just go, oh, step one is followed by step two, and is followed by step three, and is followed by step four. Like once you get that figured out, then you have it. Like. The first time I sat down, I sat down to play with Marn and like I, I drew the Team Fortress 2 engineer who has an ability that's like put a token on that and then you can spawn these other weapons and yes. it's like, oh cool, so I can do this and this card does this and then and then Marn's like, okay, so we've just got fucking bamboozled because you now have a field of turrets. I drew Tommy it, Pickles as a basic card and he has a thing that makes it so like you can't be attacked if you play yes. him right, which was really wild. <laughs> we played the other night it was like a two months ago marn will be able to remember and we'll say something in the chat probably but like there was that like juice or whatever that gate gives something 99 damage oh my God. and and 99 health but it can't attack players then somebody else played like a copy paste game like a copy a card that like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna throw an ultra ball at that and catch you and bring you over here and then i'll use baba to baba is the thing to the left <laughs> And like it ended up being like one person had a ninety nine damage card and could swing at players at the end of it. God. It ruled. It's it's a good game. Hang on, I wanna I wanna show you. Uh, I think I think I showed this to Jeff uh, Stormer when when uh, he was on too. But I wanna show I'm you ready. this card that I uh, that I sent in and is now in the game. Um, so this is can dogs eat Jello? Um, it's uh, I've seen this card. Yes. Uh, uh, I've played this card. Good, awesome. <laughs> yeah, battle cry two three, or uh, two three battle cry roll one d six. One to three dogs can eat jello, healing all dogs fully. And four to six dogs can eat jello, posing all dogs, <laughs> all dog cards. Um, I have played that exact <laughs> card, so Mark. 
The card that me and Mar lose our shit for every time is Bayonetta Final Moment. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy life. Enjoy every freaking moment of it as you can. And every time we see it, we just both can't stop laughing at it. Yeah. I love every card that's like, something will happen. Like, it's just red text, <laughs> something will happen. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, I also, what's the... All, all the Squidward, Squidward's clarinet cards make me laugh a lot. Um, good. I'm trying to see, like, I'm trying to look through. Marn, if I had to share two cards, which ones should I share? Yes. We have, Mar, Mar did the extremely funny thing of we have the right arm of Edward Elric, the left leg of Edward Elric, and then the rest of Edward Elric <laughs> <laughs> as different cards. I have, I have this right here, which I've posted. I posted, we need your help to win this fight, visitor. Extremely zoomed in picture of Nancy oh, Pelosi. No. <laughs> okay, let me give this a look. Let's put this on the stream. If you, if you get scared easily, then... Uh, look away, got it, what it, got it, what it, got it, what it. We need your help to win this fight, visitor. It's a dangerous time to be playing God game. The only ones fighting it are, are our explore cards. With a one-time donation of five coins from each player who does not own a great upon threat, we can defeat threat on board. Will you get to defeat the threat agreed upon threat? Or let them run rampant and gain a counter of their choice. That rules. That's so good. Uh, that's a really good Nancy Pelosi card. <laughs> that one's that was so fucking funny. I, I made like a fucked Digimon deck that it just interacts with itself but increases the amount of cards in your special deck by like 30, because it's like the entire Agumon line is now statted. Um, okay, this is the this is the last one I'm I'm sharing. I would really love. I I should I should write up some some cards. I should write up a little a little supplement for it. It's yeah. so fun. Marn made like a million undead unluck cards, and like they're all crazy. They're all <laughs> absolutely unhinged. Were you into baseball? I was not. No, unfortunately, I, I got into okay. it a little bit, but I wasn't like in the fandom. Then. If ch chat, we made a Jessica telephone card, oh, where if there's another gay card on the field, then it, 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 it no longer has any abilities. And then I've posted finger 11, and then I, I'm going to walk away. I, like the, <laughs> I, I have to stop. These. these are good. Um, the unique, we, we, we've been doing a lot of different unique layouts for specific cards. Like all the Higarashi or uh, Umaneko cards have unique uh, art have unique layouts and the full metal alchemist cards have unique layouts and Marn's undead unluck cards fucking rule. I love that's I that's just that art is by Goblin from Blaseball fame. Fuck you, Baltimore God. Crab. They fucking rule. <laughs> Goblin is so good. You're paralyzed, you're stunned. I uh, should message Goblin. This is good. This is good stuff. <laughs> yeah, so good. so first off, let's walk through the steps here. Yes. I'm not paralyzed. But I seem to be struck by you. <laughs> I need to make you move. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're standing still. <laughs> that's, that's sickening. I love that. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, well, you know, we love God Game. We love Teacher RPGs. We love Interstitial TV, uh, which uh, y'all should go back. I should go back, actually. I've been delaying because I don't have money. Um, but one day I will. Again. If you need to figure out a backing situation that does not work because Kickstarter does not work for you, please hit me up because I do have a list of people who cannot back on Kickstarter that I will just get paid. I you can PayPal me fucking thirty bucks and we're good. I'll figure <laughs> like, it out. We are golden. Yeah, it's it's Sorry. less it's less uh it's less not being it's more I just don't have money in the bank. Oh. It's just uh yeah. But I, I, I feel I you Kickstarter finishing soon, so I will I will uh, use my biotrophication money to buy interstitial TV, and this is this is uh, not not necessarily a promise, but uh, I think that will happen. This is tabletop sure. RPG money laundering. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, who am I rating? Um, you know, we were just talking about God Game, and this is a person who has played a lot of God Game. Uh, I'm going to go rate Sophie Baby, who is doing Hell yeah. a Day Sex Channel, the Day Sex <laughs> cha Challenge of carrying. Uh, Juan Levadev, uh, from the beginning of the game to the end, that that is Juan Levadev's corpse. To be clear, not alive. Um, so I was about to... go watch that. Um, thank you all for for being here. Uh, next week, I'm going to have uh, uh, I believe Polychromatic on Polychromatic. Uh, Let's go. 
yeah, so I'm going to Polyon, uh, so that'll be awesome. And, uh, yeah, everyone, uh, have everyone take care and gold. have a great Don't night. Let them take it from you. Bye. It is in. Remember, if you don't like what you see, you can change it. It's up to you, really. Goodbye, good luck, and have fun.